Joining us now, rapper, actor, father, entertainer, businessman, producer, pioneer. He does it all and really needs no introduction. Straight out of Compton, it's Ice Cube. Thank you so much for making some time. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so the movie comes out today, but the buildup has been catching fire for weeks. Tell us about this straight out of movement. Oh, man, you know, it's been great. People have been having a lot of fun with it. And, you know, what we wanted to show is that we come straight out of Compton, but we just boys out the hood, you know. Everybody's straight out of somewhere, and everybody can do it. Uh, so that was really what the, what the whole campaign was all about. But, you know, people... They done took this thing and ran with it. They done made, you know, comedy out of it. So it's just been a great campaign on all levels. Cube, always good to see you, my man. I got to ask you, what inspired you to feel like you needed to do this movie right now? Well, it just, it took a long time to get made. Uh, so it's been over 10 years in wow. the making. And um, I just wanted to show the origin. A lot of people have been entertained by the N.W.A. family tree for the last 25 years, whether it's Eminem and Snoop or 50 or it's my movies uh, from Boys in the Hood to Friday. None of that would exist without N.W.A. Mm -hmm. And none of that would exist without this story. So it's a lot of people out there that don't even know I rap. And uh, that's a <laughs> shame. So it's, it's time to, to let people know what time it is for real. Mm. Hey, Cube, it's Skip. Uh, allow me to say that when Straight Outta Compton caught hold in 1988, it even rocked me. I, I was just your basic Mick Jagger fan at that <laughs> point. And even today, I have to put that song in my all-time top five. So can, can you explain to me or tell me how surprised you, you have been by this iconic crossover impact that that one song has had? Well, you know, it's, it, it was a thing where we thought we were going to just be an underground group. We never thought that this music would make it to the mainstream because it was so hardcore. And at the time, it was so taboo. Uh, but, you know, Americans love it when you're honest, you know, and mm. when when you're brutally honest, you know, they even love it more. So that's that's what I think struck with people. The fact that N.W.A., we talked about the good, the bad and the ugly. And people just was uh, was was inspired by it. the fact that, you know, we really had the courage to, to come out like that with no apologies. And uh, and, you know, that, that's kind of what it's all about, you know, being yourself, having your own having your own voice and uh, not being stopped. Cube, I can, I can appreciate that, and that's why I'm looking so forward to seeing this movie. But one of the biggest reasons I'm looking so forward to seeing this movie it was, is that it's not just about honesty. It's also about intelligence, which is something that you've continuously displayed throughout the years. In other words, being smart, being wise, and understanding that there's def there's various elements to being real. You can also be real stupid, real dumb, real ignorant, real unwise for crying out loud if you go the wrong route. That was something you didn't do. So as we sit here today, what kind of message do you want a lot of the young brothers on the come up to really grasp from a movie like this outside of just being real as it pertains to being honest? Well, you know, we start off the album by saying you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. <laughs> knowledge is in there for a reason. It is all about being sharp. It is all about seeing the bigger picture. It is all about understanding that there's traps out there in the hood that you have to step around, step over, but do not step in. And uh, so, you know, hopefully this movie shows it ain't where you from. It's what you it's where you at. Uh, we was constructive with our frustration and not destructive with our frustration. We, uh, and you could do a lot with a pen and a pad. Uh, you know, a pen and a pad started everything that you see in front of you. And, uh, so hopefully the, these are the themes that you see in the movie, uh, to handle your business. Uh, cause there, there's, uh, contract issues in the movie. So all these themes you know, really show what built us and what made us and that anybody can do it. You know, that's what the meme, the straight out of Compton thing is about. It shows no matter where you're from, you can be right here. 
So what did it mean to you to have your namesake play you, O'Shea Jr., to play you in this movie? Oh, man, you know, all fathers uh, or even mothers, any parent, just love when your kid steps up. When uh, you give them uh, something to do and they do it, you know, and use all the talents and skills that you taught them. So, you know, I feel the same way about my son. The fact that he took on this role, we couldn't give him the job. He had to earn it. He had to impress a lot of people on, on different levels. And he, uh, he stepped up, man. He, uh, he murdered it. He did, mm. you know, which is, you know, a term that we use when he did his thing. And, uh, he, you know, he really, really did his thing. And I, I really love and appreciate him just for uh, submitting my legacy uh, in film. We can't wait to see it straight out of Compton in theaters today. Ice Cave, we appreciate you so much. Proud of you, bro. Hey, thank you guys, man. I love watching you guys. You know, y'all my favorite on TV. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep debating, baby. <laughs> Can't wait to see that movie tonight. It was the preseason opener for the Packers in the past last night, not only with Aaron Rodgers on the field, but also number 12 suited up and started. Find out next what we saw from that game. And in other preseason action, the Packers took down the Patriots 22 to 11. Tom Brady did start. And he played for two series. He went one of four for 10 yards. Then insert Jimmy Garoppolo, who played into the fourth quarter, going 20 of 30 for 159 in an INT. And he was sacked seven times. Skip, how worried should the pass be? Stephen A., before I answer Molly's question, a quick aside. I was shocked last night, and I did watch most of this game. Aaron Rodgers was allowed to attempt 19 passes in preseason game number one. And last year in the total preseason, he had 33 passing attempts. So I guess the Packers really wanted to lay it on Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and the Patriots in Foxborough last night. That's all I can figure out. But that's just a quick aside. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, back to Garoppolo. The young man had a rough first half after he replaced Tom Brady. And Stephen A., I, I'm going to remind you that last year as a rookie, Jimmy Garoppolo actually threw for the second most yards in the entire preseason. But he did it in the shadows. Nobody noticed because nobody really cared. Last night, they all really, really cared. Not only Patriots Nation, but much of the nation, even though the game wasn't on national TV, waited for the Sports Center highlights to see, well, how did Garoppolo do as the potential starting quarterback for the first four games? He didn't do very well to start with because he melted under that spotlight. He got a little antsy, he got a little nervy, and yet he, he kept going to the same guy Brady had been going to, Josh Boyce, I have no idea why, who wound up with 11 targets and only two catches. But after halftime, when he quit trying to force the ball to Josh Boyce, I must say Garoppolo started looking okay. Not great, but okay. He went 15 for 17 in the second half, and obviously he's doing so without any of the first unit receivers, and the starting offensive line last night was already beaten up, so you're, you're doing it with second and third teamers. So he did okay, but I stand by what I've been saying all along. I don't believe Tom Brady is going to miss any game, but if he does miss four games, I believe Jimmy Garoppolo will be lucky to win one of those four games, which would be Jacksonville in Foxborough. Your thoughts? I, I agree with you. I don't think he's ready, but I do think that, you know, Bill Belichick is more qualified than anyone, obviously, to recognize uh, the, 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 uh, the development that's taken fold. So I certainly don't have a problem with it. I mean, he got sacked. I mean, he was 20 or 30, 159 yards. Uh, there were some things that he did that were relatively serviceable. Uh, he doesn't seem to be a bum. We know, he, we know he's got potential. It's just that we're spoiled because we're talking about the success of the Tom Brady, at least for the immediate future assuming that there's a suspension that takes place. And so when you judge him against uh, one of the greatest ever and arguably the greatest of this generation, then obviously you're going to look at it and you're going to be uh, a, bit, a bit critical. And that's what I got from it. I mean, I didn't see a lot of it. I saw a few plays that he did. Um, I didn't expect much. 
Um, but but when you look at the New England Patriots and the way they run their offense, uh, can somebody like Garoppolo do whatever it takes to win football games for them? I think it's potentially possible uh, to be re- to, to be to be serviceable, if not average. Um, and I definitely think that I saw some of that last night. You know what? I also I should point out. I just remember this was on NFL Network. I was watching it locally. So I guess more people could have seen it. So maybe Garoppolo is aware of that. So, you know, it, it, this is a second round draft pick by Bill Belichick. So obviously Belichick, I don't know if I'll go so far as loves this kid, but he really, really likes him if he took him in the second round. And I liked him when I saw the little bits and pieces of him last year. But when you get thrown into that fire, trying to replace that quarterback, if in fact he has to in regular season games, I'm just not sure he can live up to that. Which brings me to my positive takeaways from last night for the Patriots. Jonas Gray suddenly escaped from Bill Belichick's doghouse. You remember he went for 201 at Indy on that Sunday night last year and wound up in the doghouse the week after. But he had that breakaway 55-yard run, and he looked like, you know, a, a big beastie stallion, man. I mean, he, he's a big kid who can fly. So that, that could really bode well. That could serve Jimmy Garoppolo well. And then on the defensive side, again, Aaron Rodgers went after the Patriots and especially after Super Bowl hero Malcolm Butler early in that game, and I thought Malcolm stood up to it. I thought he made some nice plays. I thought he hung in there. I think he's going to be pretty good as he tries to emerge as their new starting quarterback. Uh, cornerback. I think he, I think he will as well. And, and to get back to Garoppolo, I also like the fact that he was upset after the game, uh, recognizing that 11 points wasn't enough, saying it repeatedly to reporters and other folks as well, weighing himself and judging himself very, very harshly. Obviously, you got to move on. Uh, you can't sit there and languish in the misery of a subpar performance or whatever the case may be. But when you talk about the success of the Tom Brady, you need to be somebody that cares that much. You need to be somebody to be the kind of quarterback where that stuff matters to you you that you're pretty damn close to a perfectionist and for and by all accounts it appears to be that Garofalo is that way so I think that they're heading in the right direction I think he's heading in the right direction and I don't think it's one of those situations where we need to dissect him ad nauseum to the point where we're trying to project what he will and will not be because it really doesn't matter unless Tom Brady's planning on retiring sometime soon Garofalo may have a few games under his belt if the suspension holds up but outside of that we're not expecting him to see any kind of quality or significant playing time in the very near future, not as long as Tom Brady is breathing. So if, in fact, Garoppolo has to play those first four games, what's your projection when you go Pittsburgh, then at Buffalo, then Jacksonville, then, then a week off and at Dallas? One and three, they'll beat Jacksonville. That's all I got. I would agree. I don't know if that's saying too much there, guys, but uh, uh, moving on, the Patriots go to West Virginia to train with the Saints in New Orleans prior to their game. That's August 22nd, and A-Rod, you said uh, 19 attempts there. He was 11 of 19, 117 yards, and was sacked twice. Johnny Manziel was on the field last night putting up points, but how did he really look from the guy's point of view? They'll tell you on the other side.